Today the fly I'm tying is a, a yellow Peter muddler. There it is in the vise. We'll show you what it looks like. Now we'll show you how I tie it. The hook I'm going to be using is a Camazan B175. Size 10. Now I tie this fly in a range of sizes between 8 and 14. I'm going to start the tying thread about 5 mil back from the eye. Now the tying thread is a uni thread 8 0 in black. What I'm going to use for a rib and also for a butt is globe rank number 4. So I'm just going to catch that in and we'll take that down the barb of the hook. And we'll just form a butt with the globe right, going down and back up again. It only needs to be about 3 or 4 mil. Now you could varnish or super glue that butt, but I find that the, the teeth of trout rip the globe right a, a little bit, and it just adds to the, the fly. So I don't do anything with it, but that's personal preference. Okay, now we're going to use a yellow olive seal sphere. For the body, there we are, that'll do. Now the body is shorter than a standard fly, because most of the fly is going to be taken up with the muddler head. So we'll just catch that in there. Twist it now. Just form a nice uniform tapered body. There we are. Now the hackle we're going to use. This is a. There it is. Natural brown. It's a genetic cape by Meps. Grade 2 saddle. There we are, just catch that in. Open turns. Three, maybe four turns, that's all you need. There we are. Most of the disturbance of the display will be caused by the muddler head. And just open wraps with the globe right, and we'll tie off at that point. We'll just trim that. Just open the scissors, put the hackle inside the blades, and just push through. Saves your scissors and does a neater job. Now we want ordinary hen pheasant wing. I'd say you you want a piece that's the same sort of length as the the, the shank of the hook. See, so we're just going to peel that off to a right angle to get the tips roughly level. And then I'm just going to play with that in the fingers to get it to all match back. When it comes off the feather, it'll be all split, but that's back together now. So we're just going to fold that in half. Just one and a quarter length, so it's just beyond the the bend of the hook. Is the wing a loose turn to just hold in place, and we can check that out. Yeah, that looks alright. So we'll just put a couple of tighter turns on and then we can trim that away. And the last piece, there we are. 
Uh, the next thing we're going to do is a bit of deer hair, yellow, and we're going to form a muddler head with that. Take a nice piece, hold it by the tips, there we are. just hold it by the tips and just twist it in your fingers. It'll open up and you'll get the fur out of it, the fluff. And then all you need to do, put it in the hair stacker, just tap it on the back of your hand a little. That'll get the ends all even. Now, I want this to go just short, basically to the end of the butt of the, the fly. So I'm going to hold that there and I'm just going to trim off a lot of that there. Then I'm going to take a loose turn okay, and just pull tighter now. And it'll spin around the hook. Okay, just Push everything back so you can get the tines ready in front. There we are. That's given us room for another bit of deer hair. And then this time, because I want the, the yellow, which is more yellow at the roots, I'm stacking it the other way up. Okay. Like so uh, the tips are even that way, so I'm now going to trim and um, I'm going to offer it up a loose turn to hold and then tighten so it spins and get the tie-in thread in front there we are now we'll even put a little bit more on just a little bit use up the space Again, exactly the same as before. Loose, pinch a loop, loose turn, let it spin, and just work everything back. Get the tie ready thread in front. I'll pay you even to just work at it now with the toothbrush. Keep the tension on the tie and thread so that everything just starts to fall backwards. And you'll be able to get the last couple of turns on. And we're ready to whip finish. Now the one thing I don't want at this stage is the varnish to get into the, the deer hair. So what I'm going to do is varnish the tying thread. Like so. And just do a whip finish. Now the varnish is covering the whip finish there, so we know the fly is going to be alright. There we go, and we can trim that away. Now just put the lid on the varnish properly. Now what you do is you can take curved scissors and just trim. These are just nail scissors from the chemist. They won't have to be fancy scissors. But if you haven't got, just use your ordinary scissors. Just work your way backwards. Now I'd normally do this with the fly in my fingers but it's going to be easier for you to see if I do it just rotating 
than the rice. Let me just keep giving it a nice trim and you can trim it as tight as you want whereas loose is personal preference and how you plan on fishing it on the day. If, if you're fishing in, in a decent wave you'll find the better the or the bigger the, the muddler head the better the fly will fish. And you just take your time, you just want to remove as many of the cut ends of the deer hair as you can find. If you leave the, the black and yellow tips, it looks like a hackle. Just remember to stop at some point because it's very easy to keep on going. That'll do. There is my version of a yellow Peter Muddler. Fabulous fly when you're fishing Daphnia feeding trout. The wild brown trout at the west of Ireland like that a lot. Thanks for watching.